everybody. Welcome to church. We are so excited that you're here. Go ahead and stand with us as we worship Jesus. We're gonna give him some glory today, all right? We're ready for you to move, Jesus. I give you glory for all you brought me through. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward to follow after you. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Let's sing your presence. Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come. together. Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never Come, Jesus. Let your presence come into this place. Fill our hearts with your love, Jesus.
let's sing this sing you're the hope that holds me close you're the hope that holds me close with a hand that won't let go in my trouble you have shown you are the one my help comes from Sing in my sin, in my sin I lost my way, overtaken by the shame, God in my brokenness you've shown, you are the one my help comes from, sing this out, in the shadow. when I'm standing when I'm standing in the fight oh in your peace in your peace I will abide through every battle you have shown you are the one that my help comes from in the shadow shadow 
don't have to be afraid. Our arms are open, ready to receive from you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm Kaleeb. I'm Marvelous Mia. And I'm Cool Kiara. And we are so excited that you guys are here to join us today for week two of our series. We cannot wait to show you what we have in store for you today. But before we do all that fun stuff, we have found some like crazy life hacks, okay, that you might be able to use at home. We're gonna test them for you so you don't have to and let you know if it's a win or a fail. All right, you guys, we are about to try some really cool life hacks. All right, I'm gonna try them so you don't have to and then you can use them if they work. It's gonna be so fun. We're gonna start off with, be ready for this name, the super secret agent, fingerprint lift off. Okay, we're gonna be using this glass right here. We're gonna put a fingerprint on and see if we can get it off with just this pencil dust, this scotch tape, and this wonderful red paintbrush. I'm ready. Yes. Do you guys think this is gonna work out? Uh, you know what, I, I don't know. I also don't know what I would use it for if it did, but I kinda hope it works to be fun. I really think it's gonna work. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. The skeptic. I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna put a fingerprint on it. <laughs> okay, let's try it out. Can you put one big fingerprint on the glass? It's really hard. Perfect, perfect. Okay, let's put some of this lead dust on there. Mm -hmm. Get some more. Know. It's like you're an artist over there. An artist. <laughs> a little bit more. I'm so ready to Coat see it. if this works. Coat it. We're gonna get right. the tape. Here we go. Are you guys ready? Like, are you ready? ready? Are you guys ready? Drum roll, please. Mm. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh and my gosh. I'm so excited. Nope. Did it. Did he? No. Did it. Did it. <laughs> I'm seeing what? dust, just that? not in the shape of a fingerprint. <laughs> what a bummer. <laughs> what a bummer. Hey, you know what? Here, like, if I like put a uh, fingerprint on this. There this we go. one was a fail. Mm, it's a dud. Got it. <laughs> it's just a straight up dud. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna try the hairdresser magician trick. We are going to use a straightener and a piece of paper, and we're going to try and get rid of the secret message. I hope, I, hope I don't burn myself, actually. <laughs> All right. I'm hoping this one works. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness! That's sad. I, I it. thought it was working. Sam, I got so excited. <laughs> Wait, Caleb, maybe maybe work. you're not doing it right. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> Let's just try. Try. Leave it yeah. on there. Okay. That's a but we're also not gonna let it catch fire. Is there a message on it still? Yes. Wrinkles? No. <laughs> This one was a fail. Alrighty guys, so you see here, we got a water, a bowl, and a marker. This is going to be a trick that I like to call smile in a bowl. What's gonna happen is Mia's gonna pick up the bowl, and then the marker, and then draw a smiley face in the bottom of the bowl. All right, let's see. All right, and there then it is, art. We're gonna slowly <laughs> pour the water so that hopefully the water gets up underneath it and makes it float to the top. Here we go. <gasps> guys, it's guys, it's guys, actually, lift, it's oh! actually lifting off. Oh. Uh, don't, don't, don't. Yeah. So oh, yes. the eyes, oh, wait, oh, wait, 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 this wait, is incredible. This is so awesome. It's no longer a smiley face. Uh, you, know you might get some but, lines if you're lucky. You never know. Okay, wait, maybe a little more, so it's like right at the... Full water bottle fitting into that bowl. Oh. Oh, 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 yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! That, that is amazing. amazing. Come on now. Guys. <laughs> That's incredible. I definitely think? think it's a stud. 100%. Yes! yes! A stud. Did you guys hear that? 
That's my stomach growling. I'm so hungry. Are you guys hungry? I am I'm, super hungry. I could hungry. eat. I could eat. I'm pretty hungry. I, Listen, popcorn. But we don't have a microwave or like oh. a stove. Well, but we do have, we a, have waffle a waffle maker. maker. Beautiful. Do you guys want to try it? We're going to put down. these kernels in the waffle maker and Let's see if it. we can pop some popcorn. Let's do this. Mm, here we go. Here we go. Nice and smoky. Oh, 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 they're going everywhere. I'm making a mess. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, now we wait. I'll wait for that beautiful this pop noise. This kind of scary. <laughs> I'm kind of scary. Kind of, I'm not scared. Okay, here we go. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Okay, okay. I, I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. Oh! Oh! Okay. Do you guys want to count down and open this up? Yeah, yeah. Do Five, four, three, two, one. Doritos, they're my favorites, but there's an issue I have. Sometimes when I'm eating chips, they get like stale, you know, like you leave them in the mm. cupboard too long and they get stale and you go and you're eating your sandwich and you grab a chip and it's just like sad. It's a sad little chip. We are gonna use this wonderful white package because I don't know about you guys, but I have a ton of whites at my house. Yeah. Why not? We're gonna we're gonna fix this problem that we're having walk, by putting Walk this me on through there. this, Mia. Okay, you ready? Take this top part off. Okay, there's like some adhesive. I think I got it. You got okay. it. Okay. I'm so excited. This is gonna be amazing. It comes off so easily. Oh. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Uh, okay. Blue. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna put it back. Let's go right here. Okay. Make sure it's all nice and. It but don't crush the chips. Don't do it. That's important. I think this is working, guys. I'm excited for this one. I'm careful. This is, careful. This is the difficult don't, part. Don't. There we go. Yep. Okay, all right. Good job. Oh, ready, guys. Okay. I'm just gonna... Grab yourself a snack. I'm just gonna grab myself a snack. You guys want oh, some chips? I would love some chips, thank you. Here we go. Mmm. Mm. Oh, no. Got it, let's see. Then you just close it up, mm -hmm. and boom. And you just store it, like, it's on there, like... It's beautiful. That is awesome. This is... I might start doing this at home, like, I am... This is incredible. That was so good. I think this changed my life. 100% a stud. Yes. Do it. Guys, I'm so excited for this life hack. It is called Zip Tie Houdini. I have a zip tie here, and I also have three older brothers who love pranking me. And it's not that fun, but what is fun is having a life hack to get me out of it. So I'm going to show Marvelous Mia here how to do this. We're going to zip tie her hands. And then she's going to try and get out of the zip tie using her shoelaces. I'm very curious on how this going to happen. Okay, I gotta untie my shoes first. All right, untie them. Here we go. Now, that was easy enough. Now I gotta tie yes. these around my zip tie. That will be the hard part. So, get it. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Yes. Here Good we job. go. Now it's the true test. I've gotta okay. move my feet and then let the thing super go. fast. Oh! Oh my God. Yes! <laughs> that is so awesome! God, That's that where you get the play. marvelous and marvelous Mia. <laughs> Guys, it broke so I fast! That is honestly awesome. was not expecting that to work as quickly as oh, it did. Okay. Take that, siblings. That Take was definitely that, a stud. Stud for sure. 100% a stud. Y'all, that was so great. I feel like yes. I learned so many new things, and hopefully you did too, and you get to use those life hacks every day. Maybe not every day, but the popcorn one, my favorite, for sure. Caleb, what are you doing? I gotta find the fingerprints. Do y'all know what he's doing? I don't know. So crazy. We have an amazing sermon plan for you guys. Pastor Jacob is going to drop some knowledge, and we are so excited, so grab your notebooks, grab a snack, and let's get into it.
What's up, Gateway 5th and 6th? So glad to be here with you guys this weekend. We are continuing talking about the four Bs, and the four Bs are so important to Gateway's foundation. And so that means it's important to you guys as well as it's important to me. So this week, we're gonna be talking about the B that stands for belong. So just in your mind right now, think of the word belong. B-E, L-O-N-G, right? Belong. And, and we all, as Christians, every person on the planet, whether you love Jesus or not, we have a desire to fit in. We, we want to belong somewhere. We want to have a community. We want to feel like we're accepted and we're brought into a circle of people that care about us. And that's interesting that that happens because that's not by mistake. There's no one on the planet that doesn't need belonging. There's no one on the planet that can be completely isolated and is fine. There's a hole inside of every one of us that needs to belong to something. And so what is that? And so I'm gonna go ahead and preface that with a funny story because at times we've all done really crazy things to fit in. I don't know about you, maybe you're completely normal, you've never done anything weird in your life. But for me, I'm, I'm pretty weird. And so in order to fit in and to belong, we've done weird things. And one of the weirdest things, one of the funniest things that could happen, uh, I was in seventh grade. I was at a new school with new friends, new people, and I was nervous. I was, I was late to bloom, as you could say. Puberty wasn't even involved yet. And so I was trying to fit in. I was trying to find who I could fit in with. And there was this one lunch table that sat next to all the cheerleaders. Now, I know where you're going with this. I know you're already thinking ahead. You know something bad's probably gonna happen. It did, it does. It always will when you're trying to fit in when you shouldn't, right? And so I'm trying to fit in and it was really cool back then if you could have lunch delivered to the school for you. Like if you had something more than just a, a, a sack of lunch or it, it was extra cool if you had something more than a sandwich bag and chips. It was, it was cool if you didn't have to go through the cafeteria line. It was really cool if you could have your parents or a friend bring you lunch to the school and it was fast food. It was something out there. And my go-to was Quiznos. Now, if you've never been to Quiznos, it's the better Subway. All right, they toast your food. That uh, It's a requirement to toast your food at Quiznos. And I love a turkey club with jalapenos on it, right? And so I'm feeling super special because my mom has got down a routine for me. Every Tuesday, she would bring me lunch. Every single Tuesday, I would get something and everyone in the cafeteria would look and they would start just drooling. They would, they would, uh, they were just so jealous. I would get food brought to me. And I'll never forget the morning that I asked my mom, like, hey, are you gonna bring me Quiznos again today? She said, yeah, of course, but I'm gonna be dressed up for work, is that a problem? I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking, you dress up every single day. Why would that be a problem? So I'm like, yeah, whatever, that's cool. Whatever, whatever makes you happy, just, you know, bring me my, bring me my Quiznos and I'll be good. And, Oftentimes, um, my mom would walk in and I had a great relationship with my mom. All my friends thought she was the coolest. She was known as the cool mom. So she was one of the few parents I was happy to let walk into the lunchroom. And our table was at the very end of a lunchroom. So if it was a big square, we were all the way to the back in the corner. And the cheerleading table was right next to us. And so my mom would have to enter in through the front and walk all the way to the back. So that day, I remember opening my little flip phone, yes, flip phones, uh, I did have one, all right? And I know I don't look old enough, but I, I was, all right? And so I was at the very back and I remember seeing my mom say, hey, I'm here. And so I do the, I, my back is towards the back of the room because I didn't care about what anyone else was doing. And I remember I turned back to look and at the far, far end, at the front doors of the lunchroom, I see Count Dracula and Count Draculess, I guess, walk in. And all of a sudden, terror just fills my eyes. I'm, I'm all of a sudden realizing when my mom talked about dressing up, I did not realize it was Halloween day at work for her. I did not realize that by telling my mom to bring me lunch so I could fit in and I could feel cool and I could impress everyone and I could have the special lunch at school, I did not realize my mom and her husband would be walking in my mom and my stepdad would be walking in in full vampire gear, full cape, fangs. They had a little fake blood on their cheeks. I mean, guys, this wasn't, I was not excited about this. And so all of a sudden I text her, I'm like, leave it at the door, right? I'm like, leave it at the door. And she, she knows now, she knows she's got me. She's in full mom mode, full embarrass my son mode. And so all of a sudden you just see her walking. You see her flip her cape back. I'm not kidding guys, this happened. She flips her cape back and just takes steps towards the end of the lunchroom. 
At this point, the entire lunchroom, all 400 students are looking at this crazy woman. They don't know who she is, they don't know why she's there, but she's got a bag of Quiznos and she's dressed up in a ridiculous outfit. So as I see her taking this, what feels like hour long walk through the room, everyone is looking, every eye is turned, every seat is angled watching this woman and her husband walk through the building wearing a full get up, full count Dracula get up. And I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I just start slumping in my seats because my worst nightmares are coming true. All along, all I wanted to do was fit in. I just wanted to belong. I just wanted people to think I was cool. And now, it was all a waste. And so as she walks forward, everyone at my table is now realizes, oh, that's my mom. And so they're like, guys, guys, that's Jacob's mom. All of a sudden, you see the cheerleaders like, oh, oh my gosh, she's so weird. And my mom comes over, and it's not just enough for her to drop the food and leave. You know she's enjoying this. You know she's soaking this up. Her goal in life is to make sure this memory is being talked about to a bunch of students one day like you guys. And so she leans over behind me and pretends to bite my neck. And I'm just mortified. I just take the food and I'm like, please get out of my face. Like, mom, please. Like, I, I, I would rather just be, like, give me away at this point. Just let me go. I'll, let me die. I'll go back to heaven with God. Like, I just want to be done with this moment. And I'll never forget that moment because it's, it's so true to the nature of us as humans, right? We crave to belong, but sometimes we do things we shouldn't to fit in with a crowd we never belong to. And so that, that breaks the question open, why do we want to belong? Who should we belong to? And what do we do about it? And so there's two things, in your mind just say the word two. Yep, two. Two things that you need to know about this week's message on the idea of belonging. And the first one is this, that we belong to God. We have a desire to connect with God. And so point number one is we desire to connect with God. Now, every one of us were created by God, right? So if you're created by God, then you have a desire to be with God, whether you know it or not. Some of you are like, what? I don't, I've never craved to connect with God. And I promise you have, and you just haven't realized it because at the, think about when you're born, right? A baby is so needy for who? It's parents. It wants what only its parents can give it, which is love, affection, maybe milk or food, baby formula, whatever that is. It wants its diaper changed. It wants attention, right? And in the same way, we've all sat there in our bedrooms at night. We've all sat there at lunch one day. We've all sat there somewhere craving for someone special to notice us. And you don't realize that that individual you're seeking attention from you're actually wanting the father you don't realize maybe you had. And so we want God, we, have, we crave that connection with God. And so it makes sense that when Adam and Eve made that mistake in the garden, the, the consequence of us sinning as humans was separation from God. It says this in Isaiah 59, verse two, and this is the ESV version. It says, but your iniquities, and iniquities just means sin, your mistakes. So, but your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. And so we come into this planet craving affection, craving to belong with God. But here we just read in Isaiah that our sins separated us from God. And so that explains why we go through life wanting to belong and connect with people. We're looking for a way to have a deeper connection. So at the end of the day, this is what you need to realize. We desire to connect with God. But, but Jacob, you just said, I can't connect with God because of my sins. And so this is where the awesome thing about God is, and is that he sent his son Jesus, and you know Jesus, right? And he sent his son Jesus to take your separation away. Jesus came down and he was rejected on behalf of you. Jesus said, hey, dad, I will go down and I will be separated from you so that your kids can be connected with you. And so that's what Jesus did for you. But the craziest part of that is imagine me giving you the keys to the coolest Ferrari you've ever seen. Now, I don't see many Ferraris, so any Ferrari is cool, right? I know that those things are listed at $250,000 upwards to $5 million. And so I know that those things are super expensive, right? Now, imagine I just walk over to you and I'm like, hey, Take these keys. These are the keys to a Ferrari outside. 
So if I give you the keys, but you don't take them, then you never have access to what I'm giving you. And the same thing holds true, guys. Jesus has given you a gift. He says, hey, I'm going to give you the gift of connection with God. The thing you've been needing and didn't even know it. The thing you've been craving and you didn't know where from. You've been craving a connection with God, but you can only have it if you take it. And so I'm, what I'm asking you today is to understand and realize and make the decision to take the keys. You've been given them by God, but he will never force his way into your life. That's not a God we serve. He wants you to accept him for who he is. And so just in your mind right now, understand there's two points. The first is we have, we have to connect with God, but you have to receive it. So just take that second in your mind and make the commitment that from today moving forward, you're going to connect with God. You're going to receive the gift that you're no longer separated from him. You are connected to the strongest, holiest, most loving entity in the world, and that is Jesus Christ. And so that's point number one. Point number two is this. We not only need a connection with God, but we need a connection with people, and he shows us that in the garden, right? Adam is alone. Now he has God, he's belonging to God, but there's two areas in life we want you to belong to. The first, obviously, we want you to belong to God. And you have to do that by accepting, by choosing that gift to belong. But the second is we want you to belong to a community. Not only do we want that, God wants that. He is with Adam in the garden. He has all these animals, nature, perfect world. He's in a perfect world. And God looks at Adam and realizes that what Adam needs is not just connection with him, but Adam needs connection with other people. And so God looks at Adam, and, and, and this is his words. He says, it is not good for man to be alone. And so he creates Adam a friend. He creates Adam and Eve. And so your goal, the goal we want for you, is that the people you're sitting next to, the people you go to church with, the people you go to school with, and ultimately the people in God's family, the people who have chosen Jesus, are the people we want you to connect with. Because at the end of the day, if you're only friends with people who don't love Jesus, you're not going to get the support you need from them. At the end of the day, we have to have a group of people we can go to like church, that we can find people who believe like us, who love like us, who are encouraged by us, and that you're not belonging to the wrong group. The two areas you have to belong to, fifth and sixth grade, hear this, you have to connect with God and you have to connect with people. And, and God even tells us this in Ephesians uh, chapter two, verse 19, same version, ESV, it says, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens. Hopefully none of you are aliens to begin with, but. So you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens, meaning you're, you're fellow citizens with the people around you, right? But you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. So really those are some big words, but what it means is, so once you accept Jesus, once you take that gift to connect with God, now you are immediately connected with every other person that claims Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Wherever you are, that means me and you, we have a relationship. It is our goal to connect with each other. That means the people you're sitting next to right now. God is saying it is your job to connect with those people. God has already given you the gift to connect with him, but he wants you to connect with the people around you. We are designed to need to belong, but you belong to a family, and that family is the family of God. You were born into a family here on earth, your parents, your siblings, but you were also born into a family of God that when you receive Jesus, when you take that gift to belong, to fit in without ever having to dress cool, have Quiznos delivered to school, whatever that is, you don't need to try to fit in anymore, you already do, and it's to the family of God. And there are people in the world who love you and are praying for you and you don't even know it. So my challenge is this, God is never gonna just send you people that you have to be friends with, that you have to connect with. That's why we go to church, because we choose to connect with people. Church is for people to connect with other people while pursuing God. It's not about us having a single relationship with God and we don't talk to anyone. And so wherever you are, wherever you're sitting, I encourage you that the people in fifth and sixth grade sitting next to you are people God has called you to connect with. So I encourage you in this moment, it's up to you to take the challenge to belong. God has given you the family, he's given you the tools, he's given you the people. You don't have to do anything else to fit in, but you do have to take ownership and say, okay, I'm gonna connect with the people around me. So I would love it if moving forward, you did two things. You would accept the gift to connect with God and you would talk to him. You don't have to make it super crazy or weird. You can just be like, hey dad, uh, today was tough at school. 
I, I hope that you're here beside me. I need you today. And then you would connect with people. When you come to church, you would connect to the people sitting beside you. That when you leave school, you would connect with the people that you were there with. And ultimately, you would remember that being alone is a tactic the enemy wants you to have. He wants you to be alone. So don't be alone. Choose to belong to this family. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. message was incredible so I think my favorite part it has to be not only belonging to the family of God but also belonging in community so I'm gonna good. I'm gonna paint that on my ceiling so I can wake up to that every morning <laughs> yes it was so incredible we are so excited to see you guys back here next week we cannot wait for week three with you guys we love you and miss you so much bye, bye.